Shop Fede Din Tsang. Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to Shop Fede Din Tsang and welcome back to yet another video. And this week I actually wanted to discuss um, all things Real Housewives of Durban. Um, and look, I was never really a big fan of the Real Housewives franchise, except for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, and then I think once it got brought into South Africa as a concept, um, I don't know how I feel about the channels, but one, like, it was great when Madame was obviously there, um, in season one, but unfortunately, like, how the rest of the seasons played out just was not cute at all. And obviously, there was a discontinuation to the franchise in Johannesburg because of certain altercations that basically took place with some of the cast members. So now we're just left with Real Housewives of Durban, and it has been said that there is actually a plan to get, um, you know, going on, on shooting Real Housewives of Cape Town, um, which I'm super, super stoked for. But jumping right back into today's topic, uh, which is Real Housewives of Durban, season two, um, season two has been very, very, I don't want to say interesting because it honestly hasn't been interesting. If anything, it has been quite boring. Um, and I'm not going to take away from the fact that there have been new faces such as Jojo, such as Lundi London, um, such as Utobile um, from Utano Nistembu. And, um, and yeah, so personally for me, the additions to the show, look, Londi and Jojo definitely have spiced it up a bit. Um, I think for the sake of diversity, someone who's also younger, um, who's, you know, outtake is very different from the rest of the ladies, um, is, is, has definitely brought some edge onto the show. However, when it comes to Uma Kumalo or, you know, Utobile, for me, it just feels very opportunistic in terms of her being on the show because from what I've seen in the last couple of episodes that she's been a part of, it's like she doesn't want to take initiative in getting to know all the ladies except Sorisha because I guess because their husbands are in business and they, you know, kind of operate in the same circles. It just makes sense. But nevertheless, personally, I'd love to see Utobile, you know, kind of come out of a shell because I see it on their own show, but I'm just trying to, you know, kind of see her character, see her personality um, on Real Housewives. And my thing is, like, we can't always see you in the, you know, in other people's environments. Like, we also want to see what a lot of us don't see from your own reality TV show. So, and look, not everything has to be about polygamy. Um, and I guess that there needs to be more to her than just being in a polygamous marriage um but that's basically what i look forward to within the rest of the season because we are currently on i think it's 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 episode six um and then over and above that there was actually a chat just the other day about how you know in episode six how Ula Kongo, so if some of you guys might not know her but La Kongo is actually um the former president jacob zuma's um ex-fiance um they never actually got to getting married um they did have however they did have a child um however that relationship actually like ended very very abruptly um because of whatever issues that were basically happening between the two of them which look like also just does not want to disclose but all we can tell was definitely the fact that she was really really hurt um in this particular relationship because because Messiah led to you know be with this man um but unfortunately because this man is also just you know a lover of uh controversy and there's just so much happening it's not surprising that the relationship ended the way that it ended and um you know it is what it is but in the latest episode, what is interesting, though, is the fact that when these ladies were basically, were basically chilling, this might be a spoiler alert, but um, the fact that when she got the flowers delivered to her, there were certain remarks made about whether or not these were indeed actually from somebody else. Um, and I can understand why people grew to that suspicion because Ola Kongo is also someone who's very, very reserved. She's very quiet when it comes to her relationships. Um, whenever the idea of a relationship or a partner is spoken about, she's very, very timid about the, the, the subject, which makes you think, oh, but 
would she have moved on um because she's still very much you know still still you know her her heart is still you know with her ex um and so you can't really fault her but the question then begs would she did she actually send herself those flowers and personally i think she did because there's just a lot of mumbling and there wasn't anything that was straightforward and it just made me also suspect that look yeah she might not be telling the truth and also the story just didn't make sense how did she how did that petals guy even know that she was at jojo's place and why would you get the flowers delivered there what point is it that you're trying to make for me it just did not make it make any sort of sense but um but to others it may have but i think i'm gonna have to side with the ladies on the show when they basically also suspected the same thing so do let me know what you guys think if you guys have been watching um the recent episodes of season two of real housewives of durban and let me know what you guys think and i will basically bring you even more um commentary on these shows now that i actually have capacity to watch and review these shows accordingly uh but yeah but drop me any of your comments opinions about the show and who you love on the show what you want to see different and we can basically engage from that point on so please don't forget to comment like share most importantly subscribe and i will see you guys next time